hit the, hit the, the recording here. Thank you, thank you very much to Kurt and to Denise for, for being here with us today. On behalf of the French American Chamber of Commerce of Chicago, welcome to both of you and to GSF and welcome to all of our attendees. Um, thank you so much. As turns out, this was, this was pure uh, luck at least, or dumb luck at least on, on my side of the planning to, to just realize that I think today is, correct me if I'm wrong, exactly one year since uh, since the WHO officially declared that that we were in a in a global pandemic, so who knew that we would uh, that that who if we had only known then what we know now and and what a year it's been and and how and how how much has changed it's really um it's really quite incredible so it turns out that this is a, a pretty timely conversation um, we're really happy to uh, to have Kurt here and I'm going to turn it over to you just for. Um, just a couple, a couple of housekeeping points. Thank you to to everybody who's here. You please feel free to to open up your your cameras. Um, we are a fairly small group, so we're going to make this a pretty conversational uh, presentation and discussion. We're going to let Kurt start by telling us a bit about GSF and and just about his industry. Um, I'll follow up with a few questions, and then we'll open it up to questions and discussions with discussion with everybody who's there. So once Kurt is done, feel free to, to jump in with questions. If you have questions that come up as he's giving his presentation, please feel free to throw those in the chat or the Q&A, and I will make sure to write them down and, and, um, and get to those uh, before the end of the hour. So thank you, Kurt. I will let you introduce yourself and, and turn it over to you now. Thanks. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me today. My name is uh, Kurt Kempel, and I serve as the general manager for uh, GSF, uh, kind of overseeing the business in the Illinois and uh, Wisconsin states in the United States. I uh, wanted to start kind of introducing our uh, company, um, you know, on a very high level, and I'll put a PowerPoint together to kind of walk us through that. So let's see if this all works out well. So if First, let me introduce the company a little bit. Uh, very unique. It was founded in 1963 in all places of Paris, France. And uh, since that time, it's grown essentially organically, which is the most unique aspect of this company, uh, to an international footprint, footprint in France, Spain, UK, Canada, and uh, not uh, about 30 years ago in the United States. Um, in the United States, we're essentially a Midwest company uh, with core offices in Des Plaines, Illinois. Uh, recently, we put a flag in Rockford, Illinois. Our, our U.S. headquarters is locate, located in Indianapolis, uh, Indiana. We had just put an office in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then Cincinnati, Ohio. It's a very different company, again, as I stated, as it's grown organically. And many of the companies that you'll see in our uh, you know, kind of like line of business will uh, go through a lot of acquisitions to grow their company, but it's been an investment in people and, um, you know, customers in a one by one approach. Today, it's a 36,000 uh, plus uh, company of employees, uh, over 1 billion in annual sales. And as, as I stated, we're in five countries with 30 subsidiaries and 126 branches with about 7,100 customers. You know, the core focus is what has made us uh, successful is, is our people. Uh, people is what we do. Service uh, cleaning is the service we provide. Uh, we really work hard to try to find uh, employees that uh, embody our vision and values and um, allow them to, to grow into leaders for our company. And what I'm going to do with you is we've uh, recently uh, started taking the approach of shooting some videos that kind of highlight both our culture and both our um, service to our customers. So I'm going to show you a, a brief three minute video if this all works out successfully here. Uh, that highlights a little bit about the culture of the company. It's going to work. GSF is great because of our people. That's probably the easiest question you're gonna ask me. My name is Troy Bargeman. I'm the president of GSF USA. Well, we help our people develop into leaders. It's vital for our company. 
both from a business perspective, from a culture perspective, and from a branding perspective to get this right. And so committing to people development is something that must be internalized by all our leaders. When I became a branch manager, GSF provided me some, from some particular tools. Uh, they gave me the knowledge, they gave me the confidence, they helped me work my way up, and it, it helped. I, I asked my peers, uh, they kind of guide me, so it, it, it actually worked for me. GSF helps employees grow and develop, giving them the training they need, giving them the equipment they need, giving them orientation, guidance on how to succeed as an employee. Uh, GSF helped me get my certification for uh, my CPS class, which is Certified Professional Supervisors. That's one of the guides and one of the tools that they're bringing out, something new that they're bringing out to new managers, um, offering for our, our clients. Uh, it's knowing that there's somebody in your facility that is knowledgeable of what is going on in your building and the surroundings. You know, the reason I wanted to work for GSF was because uh, one of GSF's customers who I know was a raving fan. Uh, he kept telling me I needed to meet uh, Kurt, the, the gentleman that runs the Illinois branch. And you could just tell that they, that they really meant that they wanted to take care of their customers. They wanted to do good things for them. Uh, and, you know, throughout that conversation, I realized, like, it was a perfect fit for me. I like to work at GSF because of the environment and people. I'm a really outgoing person and I enjoy working with my co-workers here. We're always there for each other and that's really important for me. GSF is great because it's fun. It's, uh, they care about their people. They care about clean. They go the extra mile. You know, I like working at GSF because there's a focus on teamwork, respect, and integrity. I think what sets GSF apart from other companies and other service providers is, again, the leadership and the support. And the human side of this company is totally different than any other place I have worked. I think we're all here treated with respect and given all the tools that we need to succeed as a company and, and at a personal level as well. GSF is great because, unlike other companies, they try to make a difference, and GSF USA is the difference. So taking through uh, to our next slide, uh, we're going to talk about four really pillars that uh, we focus on that has kind of made us successful as a company and, and, and is, is what we do. Uh, process, products and equipment, communication, technology, and then, you know, bringing it back to the most important thing, our teams, our people. Process, products and equipment. Uh, this has been critical for us because our approach with this, uh, you know, was in place really before uh, COVID hit. Um, but was ensuring the process is the same at every location. Um, no matter what building you go to or what school or any environment that we're cleaning in, everything we're doing is the exact same. You know, and that allows us to be able to uh, grow and develop people easy, uh, you know, as they progress through their careers where no matter what environment they're in, they're used to the, uh, you know, the same, the same tools to be able to accomplish their job. Uh, we work hard to have a really streamlined uh, set of products, you know, and, and, and equipment. Um, we buy one set of vacuums, we buy one set of scrubbers. Um, it, it's a very simple playbook uh, and we work really hard to keep it simple. Communication, um, constant and consistent communication from our leaders to our customers has been crucial. Uh, you know, I think we've always done a pretty good job as a company of, you know, over communicating to our teams and our customers, but you know, when COVID hit, uh, we had to even improve that even more. You know, uh, what, one of the things that I never thought would be uh, an advantage for us is the world of what we're living in today with with Zoom calls like we're doing now. Um, you know, we, we used to take the time to, to schedule meetings and lunches and it would be a whole ordeal of a half a day just to meet with a customer to review, you know, our service levels with them or with your teams. And and now we're able to, to increase our level of communication where I'm able to meet with 10 different customers in a given day and, uh, you know, setting up almost standing meetings weekly or, or bi-weekly uh, that we're touching base talking about cleaning. Uh, it, it's been incredibly impactful and I think uh, it, it's been a key of our success of helping customers understand what we're doing, uh, you know, obviously as we work through the COVID pandemic. 
Third one is technology. Uh, we really pushed the bar in technology, um, you know, and cleaning as a company. Uh, COVID helped a little bit, but we've been doing a lot of that before. Uh, you know, COVID brought us a lot of the electrostatic technology. You know, as when this first started, you'll see, um, you know, chemicals being sprayed on airplanes and in schools and on buses. Uh, that's the technology of electrostatic spraying. Uh, that technology has been around for a very long time in other industries, but it was first really introduced to the cleaning industry because of the pandemic. As you saw in the last video, you'll see robotic technology. Um, we've invested, I'd say, pretty heavily in robotic technology of, of vacuums and scrubbers. And you know that technology is not made to replace people. It's it's made to help uh, a system um, to be more efficient at what they're doing. So that, you know the people are able to focus on more detailed cleaning and improve disinfecting. You know while some of the traditional stuff of just scrubbing a floor, uh, we we can now use robotic technology. Uh, UVC lights is another disinfection uh, um, process we put in a place with COVID. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And uh, a very unique uh, approach to chemicals, uh, on-site chemical generation. And I have a short video that we'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's quickly becoming the standard of what, you know, what cleaning will look like in the future. You know, and then, you know, rounding about back to the video, the most important thing of what we're doing is, you know, our people. Uh, the, the key to our success will, will always be the teams that we create. Uh, growing and developing people, motivated people um, will improve cleaning for our customers, uh, more so than creating checklists and, you know, and um, motivation is important. Uh, we spent a lot of time developing people. Uh, we've even created uh, G what we call GSF University, where, you know, we're taking, we're, we're taking people that we see as supervisors and frontline managers, and we're giving them opportunities to grow, opportunities for career advancements. One of the one of the core reasons that you know outsourcing is uh, cleaning is has been is works so well as I'm able to take somebody and I'm able to grow them into different uh, areas. You know, in an in-house solution, when a customer is handling the cleaning on their own, you know, a lot of times that are the folks that are doing the work, they don't have anywhere to go. Uh, you know, there's a ceiling; uh, they can't move to that next supervisor or manager position within an organization until somebody retires. Uh, you know, with us, you know, and having such a diverse portfolio of customers, I'm able to take somebody who's ready to grow and motivated to grow and, and present an opportunity to them. And uh, we've been doing that a lot of that lately, and it's been, it, it's worked out really well for us. Uh, I figured we talk a little bit about uh, cleaning during COVID. Uh, what has changed? Um, you know, a lot, I would say, I'd say cleaning is now uh, important to everybody. Uh, when I first started, uh, nobody was interested in talking about the equipment you used or the chemicals that you sprayed around. And now that's what everybody wants to talk about. What have we done and how have we responded and how have we communicated to our customers is really it's about increasing the frequency of cleaning and disinfecting. Um, you know, you can, you can have a special process that every night you go through and you fully disinfect a room or a building, but uh, you know, the second somebody walks into the building, it becomes essentially infected again. So it's not so much about the process of dis disinfecting, it's about the increased frequency of disinfecting. You know, and because of that, we've shifted a lot of our folks from the evening clean to daytime. So I'd say we are at one point, half of our teams were more focused uh, cleaning during the daytime when people were around, uh, focusing on high touch point areas throughout the day uh, than we were of, you know, having the, the, the bulk of the team coming at night. You know, as we talked a little bit about in the last slide, the new technology, uh, this is where the electrostatic spraying technology is coming to play. Uh, the UVC disinfection um, that we've been using in, uh, you know, a school district. We even went as far as creating mobile, uh, mobile COVID disinfection uh, vehicles uh, that were obviously equipped with all this technology and the PPE equipment, but they even were, um, they were set up to be able to carry chemicals around and be able to uh, disinfect very unique um, unique areas where customers were asking us to do such as bleachers outside or uh, school buses or playgrounds. And so uh, those are one of the responses we had as well. And then uh, as we talked about our, our approach to chemicals is very different than I see that you're going to see most in our industry. And we've been, we've been on this ECAS solution uh, for four years now, and it, pro it proved to be very critical uh, both from a supply and demand uh, standpoint as we went through the, just the simple ability to get chemicals and, you know, basically anything that we need at this time and uh, to be able to use it uh, as a safe product uh, was really unique. So I was going to show you a brief uh, four minute video that highlights the chemical approach that I think you guys will find interesting uh, that we're using it with one of our customers. Here we go. Thank you. 
My name is Michael Lopez. I am the Director of Facility Operations for Valley View School District. Valley View School District is comprised of 22 educational facilities and over 16,000 students. Schools should prioritize cleanliness because the health and safety of our students and staff is of utmost importance. Also, uh, first appearances as people walk into the school is, is also important as the community comes into our buildings. Having a clean school demonstrates that we do care about the learning environment. One of our cleaning related challenges has been uh, a struggle with maintaining adequate supply of our product on site. As everybody knows, the, the pandemic just really scared everybody and it really complicated stuff when, when you're talking about getting product in. And, and we experienced that, and not getting product in a timely fashion, not having it at the ready. You know, the supply and demand issues have been, have been a real issue that everybody has been dealing with, of just getting basic cleaning chemicals to clean and disinfect your space. So having it in-house and is, is to me the answer, because we have an a endless supply of the product, and we don't have to worry about, are we getting it in? When are we getting it in? Who's gonna clean it? How's it gonna get done? That's all answer for us. Pathosans allowing us to have a generator at every single school puts us at such a unique advantage of having an unlimited supply of chemicals to support the district no matter what happens in the future. The chemicals are created through the process of electrolysis, taking water, salt, and electricity, creating two chemicals, pathoclean and pathoside. We're able to use it in spray bottles, in uh, scrubbers, in electrostatic sprayers to solve any problem that we're faced with at the district. With using very limited uh, chemicals in this product, it's, it's I'm less concerned about the safety of our staff members and the chemicals that are added to cleaning products these days. And to be able to say that we only have three ingredients, I think it gives the employees and the staff members a peace of mind what's used inside of them. Cleaning challenges that, that our district faces are too many cleaning products that are available. So when, when the staff is faced with, we've got six or seven bottles in this cart and I have to either clean the glass or clean the hard surface or clean the floor, which one am I using? A lot of confusion of what chemicals to use, what on what surfaces, hard surfaces and soft surfaces. So when we simplify it with the path of sand systems, I think that either having a, a simple cleaning product and a simple disinfectant will make their jobs much easier and much safer. We've been working with uh, electrochemically activated solutions now for over four years. Uh, we started with our first school district and after a successful run of over a year, we have since deployed it to every single customer that we service uh, in Illinois. Before we came here, uh, the approach was using chemicals that uh, had a very aggressive smell or were harmful to burning your eyes. That was the approach to clean. Now with this product, uh, it's no scent and it's something that you can get on your skin or even in your eyes and is not irritant for you. But it's more effective than the chemicals that were being used before, which is makes, what makes it such a great fit for the school environment. The Pathosan systems will assist us in returning to an on-site learning environment. will also provide us with the uh, comfort of knowing that we can respond to any type of emergency outbreaks in the future. The benefit of the Pathosan on-site generation systems will give us the confidence and, and, and give our community the confidence that this product is here, it's used every day, we have an abundant supply of it, we're not going to run out, and we can keep our schools safe and clean. With everything that has happened in the world, cleaning has been at the forefront of changing the industry in terms of how we clean. And chemicals have been something that we're talking about every day now. Pathosans allows us the opportunity to be at the forefront of this. Not only can we have an effective solution, but it's safe for everybody that's involved. Um, so as you'll see, that's a, you know, a very unique approach to chemicals that uh, something we've been uh, doing now actually almost five years and uh, it's not something unique to that specific customer. It's what we do for every one of our customers, no matter the segment it is, whether it's education or office, uh, you know, or manufacturing facilities, that's the, that's the solution we choose in every environment. Uh, you know, I've been asked a lot lately of what it's been like to manage employees, uh, you know, essential workers during COVID. And I, you know, I'd say it's been uh, extremely difficult. Um, you know, we have over 700 people working, you know, on the team here in the greater Chicagoland area today. And, uh, you know, asking our folks to, to, to go into work when, you know, at a time where many people, especially early on, were staying home, uh, you know, was very hard. Um, you know, we had, they had emotions just like everybody else and, and fears, and we would handle that kind of on a, on a one-by-one -one basis. Um, 
you know, what's neat to say, though, is, you know, most of our team has been uh, gone through that vaccination process uh, that really just got completed uh, this week in the last couple of weeks, um, you know, through the 1B, um, and, you know, in the school districts we clean. Um, so, but, but it's been hard and it's, you know, it's been handling everybody's emotions kind of on a one by one basis, you know, it, that, that has gotten us through this, both for our customers and our teams. You know, one thing for sure is COVID has redefined what cleaning and disinfecting look like for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, we understand that, we know that, and, and we welcome it. And I think we, as a company overall, we were really positioned well before this happened, um, where we were ac actually focused on, you know, a customer base where we're cleaning matter. Um, and we proved to be successful. One of the steps that we took, you know, because, you know, cleaning has changed forever is uh, we've gone through a very extensive uh, uh, certification process. You know, our program, Ecologique, uh, is now a Green Seal certified program. And while it's a special program, what I can tell you is this program is what we do everywhere. And so we've uh, officially Green Seal certified our first customer and our plan is through the rest of this year is to get that certification at, uh, for every single customer that we have. And essentially what it does, it ensures the highest standards of clean in the industry. Um, you know, we talk a lot about what we do, but having that third party, uh, you know, kind of stamp of approval that we are doing what we say we're gonna do is, is criti critical, um, you know, during a time where the proof of clean is important. Um, what really goes into it? Uh, you know, it's the leadership training, what we talk about with GSF University of continuing to grow and develop people. Uh, it, it's extensive documented training uh, processes and procedures. Um, it's, it's more than just hiring somebody and giving them a, a rag and telling them to go clean an area. It's, there, there's investments in people um, that are made significantly. Uh, we'll work with our customers uh, to make sure that all of our uh, consumables, your paper products, your soap are environmentally sourced. Um, as you saw with the chemical approach, sustainable cleaning chemicals, water, salt, and electricity. Uh, and then using high tech and efficient equipment, um, recycling of water, uh, less chemicals. Uh, those are all part of the programs that we put in place, uh, you know, that we're proud to say that we're a Green Seal certified company today. You know, and finally, uh, you know, segments of business, uh, as you saw from the video, education is a big part of uh, what we do, the uh, kindergarten through high school. Uh, we're also able to do, obviously, do higher education. The office space is and will always be one of our largest segments. Um, you know, focused on, you know, large office space, property management, uh, as we work with uh, the BOMA organizations in the city, and industrial, and, and of course, the medical segments with hospitals and long-term care. What's really unique is if you look at our business too in France, uh, it expands even further than that in other segments like agro foods, um, you know, and nuclear power plants uh, that we clean and support, uh, airports, and, and even airlines that we're cleaning. So, um, we're, we're able to be really be effective in, in really any type of segment uh, with the simple process that we have with our chemical and, and equipment, which is, you know, the industry leading for us. So thank you. I'll stop the share now. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt. Are you, uh, you done? I'm going to, um, as a, as I'm talking here, I'm going to promote. I, I don't know if our if our panelists are able to um, to turn on their on their on their cameras. Our participants are able to turn on their cameras. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to promote everybody to uh, to panelists, which should allow you to to be able to turn on your cameras if you want to ask a question directly. I'll start though because I, I have my own my own little list. Um, can you can you talk about you did you did talk about being an essential business and and how that that was uh, that really has had a has it had an impact on on how you operate over the last year can you talk a little bit about um about keeping your your staff safe because i think that we forget sometimes we think of frontline staff as being the the people who are in the in the medical field and in the grocery stores but we forget that that uh that the cleaning industry has really been on on the front lines of this since since day one so can you talk a little bit about that yeah, uh, you know, I'd say uh, the biggest priority uh, that we had with keeping them safe was over communicating with them, uh, you know, as best we could as the information came out, uh, you know, obviously there were different uh, directives coming out. Uh, it seemed like every week uh, from the CDC and everybody else of, of what can and should we be doing and uh, we did our best to communicate our, our teams and we focused on masks. Uh, we focused on gloves. Mm -hmm. and, uh, most importantly, we, we focus on social distancing, you know, as a lot of our teams would, you know, they, they tend to gather for lunches together as a team as yeah. you know, 
you do. And uh, we worked hard to try to separate that, you know, um, you, you know, it, it, communication was our core, uh, you know, and then and really enforcing the mass. Masks were not something that was easily accepted at the beginning, um, you, you know, with folks. And uh, we pushed that pretty hard. Okay. That makes sense. And speaking speaking of the masks and the gloves, I think in the, in the for any of us who, who tried to even in, go to Target um, in in March or April, we saw that there were a lot of empty shelves. Clearly, there was a there was a big supply chain problem, especially um, especially with with any kind of cleaning equipment, at least for the for the average consumer. How how were you guys able to handle that? And do you think that um, I think that the the, the magnitude of this of this public health crisis took everybody a little bit by surprise, but do you think that now as a country and as an industry, we're, we're better prepared for a situation like this in the future? I'd say we had a lot of the same challenges with, you know, obtaining, uh, you know, the PPE equipment for our teams, you know, as everybody else experienced that, you know, I think we obviously were a little bit ahead of the ball game, given the fact that, you know, cleaning is our industry and, you know, we have relationships that were able to help, uh, you know, get us uh, materials and maybe uh, quicker than somebody else. But we had these same challenges and it was just a, an entire team effort to, you know, to help source it and figure out what the best solutions were going forward. Uh, you know, giving a, a person a mask uh, that they would wear one day at a time um, and throw it out wasn't uh, a reasonable option for us when we were looking at over 700 people a day. Yeah. So that's where we went to, you know, kind of creating our own masks, uh, you know, that we felt safe about. And, you know, it could be laundered and in, 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 in what you see today. Um, uh, do, do I think we're in a better situation? I mean, um, you know, I think we're more aware now, you know, I think masks are going to be uh, more of a more common uh, than different. Um, you know, as we used to go to the airports and, you know, get on airplanes, you see, you know, a few people, you know, wearing masks. And I think what you're going to see is even as uh, people get vaccinated, I, I think you'll see people continue to wear masks, you know, out in public and in other environments. Sure. Um, what do you think, I mean, speaking of that, I think that, that your industry has a huge role in sort of restoring the public confidence in, in a lot of things, especially related to, to travel and how we live our lives now. I mean, it's, it's hard to imagine um, being back on a plane surrounded by people. And, and, and I think you might think, look more carefully at a hotel or a restaurant or, or of course, our, our children's school. So what do you, how do you see your, your your industry's role as, as really helping to, to get businesses back up and running and to get the, the general public more feeling more comfortable with with getting back to some of our some of our routines. You know, I think the proof of clean is uh, more important than ever, right? Um, you know, I think being able to, to to showcase what you're doing, to talk about your processes you know, in the chemicals you're using. Um, mm -hmm. There's gonna be increased level of cleaning and disinfecting for the foreseeable future, uh, for sure. You know, and you know, I think what's really critical is as we continue to spray all these chemicals around is, is is understanding what chemical we're actually spreading around. You know, I tell people all the time it's it's easy to find a chemical that kills things. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really hard to find a chemical that kills things and is not harmful harmful to us. Uh, you, you know, I think there's going to be a tremendous focus on that, and you know, I think our approach to what how we look at chemicals today is uh, that we're already doing. I think you'll see more of that in the future. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Is that so? That's always sort of been part of your your company's your company's approach, right? And and that's probably even even more so now that we're in a way over cleaning, right? And 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 doing more than we were doing before. Yeah, the tech the technology is not new. It's been around for over a hundred years. Uh, the process of electrolysis, water, salt, and electricity. Um, it's just mo most recently it's kind of come to the uh, you know to the industry because we've been able to. Uh, put it in a system that you can easily put in towards a janitor closet or a, you know, a facility within an, uh, you know, a building, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the barriers to entry to doing something like that is it's expensive. It's not, it's the most expensive solution you can have to generate any chemicals on site. But uh, we made that move because to me, it makes sense. Uh, you know, it made sense five years ago and it makes even more sense now. Um, you know, if we're going to be about treating our people right, let's give them uh, chemicals that, uh, you know, are safe for them. Um, mm -hmm. there was kind of, um, you know, when I first came here, it was, you know, if, if it doesn't, uh, you know, have, have a, have a very aggressive smell and burn your eyes when you were cleaning with it, it doesn't work. Well, you know, that's not the case. You know, this chemical is, um, is uh, stronger. And I'll use this analogy all the time because if people understand what bleach is, right. Um, you know, it's more powerful at killing things than bleach. 
uh, but you can get it in your eyes and on your skin, uh, and it's uh, and it won't uh, it won't harm you. So it's very unique to have that type of chemical solution, but. Uh, it, it's critical in helping businesses open because as you've seen people spraying chemicals all over the place, it, you know, people are going to start to ask themselves, well, what, what are they spraying? What's in the air? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and uh, I think that's where we're going next. I think that's where we are now and going to continue to go. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, we have a, a, a good, a good group of participants. I'd like to, to invite everybody who's, who's here to please feel free to unmute yourselves. Um, Turn your cameras on, ask questions. If you don't want to do that, or if you can't for some reason, please feel free to ask a question in the Q&A or the chat. But we definitely want to give, um, give our, our participants an, an opportunity to talk, to talk directly to Kurt. Uh, we have a question, okay. Um, let's see, okay. I'll, I'll read this. It's a question from, from Eric in the chat. With such a great shift from evening cleaning to daytime cleaning, has that had a measurable effect on hiring practices and what you recruit for in terms of customer facing abilities. So has a, has a customer facing personality become more important um, as there's a greater interaction between, between um, your staff uh, and, and uh, has that had a measurable effect on hiring practices and what you recruit for? Uh, to, to me, it's been a great shift. Uh, okay. If I had the choice of cleaning, I would put our entire team working during the daytime hours on, you know, on your first and second shifts working around all of our customers uh, because you're able to build a relationship. Um, you know, that, that, that person, those individuals are now part of uh, the company culture and organization in which we support. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I often found that, um, you know, when we're cleaning at night after everybody's left the building, um, you know, it's easy to talk uh, bad about the company cleaning or the people doing the work um, because they don't see them, they don't know them. And now that they know that uh, Sarah cleans their floor and they see her every day and they see the work that she's doing, uh, you know, they understand how they're being supported. Um, so it's been a very positive impact in our, in our relationship with our employees and our customers. Um, you know, and but shifting people forward, uh, you know, the ability, the ability to be able to communicate effectively, uh, you know, in English is is critical as well. Um, you know, because they're around people uh, that are going to want to talk to them. So, it, it's changed our hiring and who we put forward, um, you know, on the day shift a little bit. But uh, for the most part, the, the shift has been really taking folks that have been working on a second or third shift and giving them an opportunity to work during days. And um, it, it's been a pretty smooth transition for us. Great. Okay. Um, let me see that on the message. Are there are there other are there any other questions um, from the from the participants? Feel free to. So I should have been I should have made it possible for you to to turn on your cameras. I think I've just co-hosted everybody, um, and you should be able to you should be able to unmute yourself if you if you want to. Um, if not, I, I do have another question. So what, so what do you see as, um, as some of your, as some of the, the, the longer term, um, the, the longer term effects of, of, of what's happening now? I mean, do you think that, that some of the, we're seeing, we're seeing really a, a move to um, to improve cleaning practices, to really demonstrate, I think, to the on, the on the part of businesses to demonstrate to the public that they're that they're doing everything that they should. Do you think? Do you see any long term impacts on how businesses approach approach cleaning? Um, and if so, uh, what what sort of budget implications do you think that 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 might have for for businesses as they, especially maybe the smaller ones, as they they think about how to how to get back in back up and running. Uh, normally and as people start coming back into offices and into into public spaces because right now we're still on a pretty a pretty limited um capacity for for a lot of for a lot of industries you know when i first came to this industry i, I quickly realized uh, you know the conversation was never uh you know uh, you know about cleaning uh, you know and how how good we are at doing a job it was essentially how quick can we pick up garbage cans in a, in a given space and it was mm -hmm. It was kind of a race to the bottom in terms of price. We, we, we do, we do, we have done a good job of devaluing the people that have been doing the work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what, what I think has changed now is, uh, you know, they want to know what you're doing, you know, how you're doing it, how often you're disinfecting their desks and the, you know, the door handles. And, 
you know, I think you're going to start to see those conversations are going to have to happen. And, and I think as you look in the office space, especially in the city, you know, with people taking less space and buildings now fighting for tenants, I think uh, it's going to be critical for them to be able to demonstrate to their tenants and to new prospective tenants that, you know, cleaning really matters in their buildings, in their common mm -hmm. areas, in their space. And, uh, it, you know, it's just not a person uh, running around uh, pretending to clean. They're really cleaning. And uh, I think that's going to be critical as we go forward. Um, you know, will pricing of, of cleaning increase? Uh, sure, it may be, but it's only going to increase really from, you know, an increased um, amount of hours and labor that are now put into a building. Um, you know, cleaning is all about labor. When you look at the cost of, of cleaning, uh, you, you can get up to 90% of the overall cost is people, right? You know, it's payroll, taxes, and benefits, and, you know, it's the folks that are doing the work. Um, you know, so you might see increased, uh, you know, um, you know, people and disinfecting the buildings, but, you know, I think it's something they can't just say, uh, hurry up and pick up garbage cans really quick. And we want you to reduce the, you know, the price by 5% every year. I don't think those are the conversations that uh, we're going to be allowed to have as a society anymore. I think sure. we're actually going to talk about, you know, cleaning matters. Um, a question from the, from the audience. How does, how does technology play a role in service delivery? Uh, it allows us to be more efficient, right? Uh, so, you know, when you look at the different types of ways we disinfect and especially electrostatic spraying, um, we're using the same chemicals that you saw in the video on those electrostatic uh, sprayers. But to be able to go through a, an office and disinfect it uh, by hand with a microfiber rag and a spray bottle, you know, that exercise may take us 10 to 15 minutes to fully disinfect that room. With an electrostatic spray, I'm able to do that room within 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to probably be more fit, uh, more effective doing it because of that technology than I would even with a hand, you know, doing it by hand. Mm -hmm. So we're able to get through space quicker, um, you know, which helps keep, keep the cost down as we continue to, you know, to have to disinfect more. Okay. Um, why would a school... Um, so for example, why would a school outsource to GSF besides cost savings? That's a, another, another participant question. Well, well, I'd say, you know, from what I've, what I've learned is, you know, most of the schools first started outsourcing for cost reasons, right? You know, they've always believed that, you know, an in-house solution where they were district employees was a better solution than outsourcing because of experiences they've had with, with outsourcing or, or folks I've known. I think, you know, the obvious reason is, you know, I, I think in, in general, any business needs to focus on kind of what their core is. And in, in, in education, their core is teaching and learning, right? Um, you know, running a uh, custodial team of 100 people isn't, isn't their core. Uh, to outsource it to a company what it, in which that's all they think about and all they do uh, is going to eventually improve your level of clean. Right. Uh, you know, again, as we talked about before, you know, if you have a whole bunch of people working in a school district and cleaning, um, you know, there's a natural ceiling that exists. Uh, there's only so many leader, lead positions, supervisor positions that exist within a team, um, you know, and you will have people that are ready to take that next step in growth and you don't have an opportunity for them to do that. And, and therefore you're going to lose them. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at an outsourced solution, when we identify those people who are, are ready to make that jump, we can continue to grow and develop them in, in other locations. And, um, you know, so I, th I think uh, if you partner with the right company, um, you know, I, I think you're going to see uh, quickly uh, an improved level of cleaning um, in addition to cost savings, right? There's going to be a natural cost savings measure from going from an in-house to an outsource solution, especially in the school environment. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the, one of the questions that, that, you know, we love to ask at the FACC, of course, because that's, this is, this is sort of our, our, always our angle is, can you talk a little bit about what it's like to be, um, to, to be a, a French company in the U.S. and to sort of be, uh, not, you're, you're a global company, of course, but originally a French company here. How, how does that, how does that, if at all impact your, your company culture, your, your approach to, to the industry? Um, is there anything you can say about, about sort of that bicultural angle um, to, to, to your work and to the company? Um, you know, I came to this company from outside the industry because it's so different. You know, I had worked in corporate America and I had uh, worked for a private owner before and uh, this company is very different. Um, it, you know, it, it fits kind of in that middle spot, um, you know, which is the perfect spot for us and for many people to be able to grow and develop. 
uh, you know, I'd say of, of what our impacts are from a French perspective with our customers, uh, you know, it's not a ton. Uh, we're allowed to operate here, um, you know, kind of as an independent organization that reports to our, 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 our French structure. Uh, it's, it's nice when, you know, they come in and they're able to engage and kind of meet some of our customers, um, you know, but it's, it's not a huge influence uh, as to what we do. If anything, it's, it's a heck of a story uh, as, as to why we came here in the U.S., that I'm able to share with our customers and, and the culture that was essentially created in France is what we're trying to replicate here. And go ahead, I'm sorry. Can you tell us a little bit about that story since we didn't, we didn't get that really in your... Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, our, our, our owner, Mr. Nawaze, who started the company, who's, who's still the owner of the company today, is, is in his late 80s. And, uh, you know, he, he, as I said, we grew organically. He, grow, he grew customer by customer and uh, country by country. And uh, as you saw in 1987, uh, he made the decision to come to the United States. And, and the story uh, that is told is, um, you know, he always wanted to have a business in the United States. Uh, one was because you know, at the time it was kind of, I made it, you, you know, I, I made it, I'm, I'm successful. I have business in the United States. And the other one is uh, he remembers holding his mom's hands on the streets of Paris, being liberated from the Germans by the U S and uh, that was a major imprint on his life. And uh, you know, because of that um, you know, it was very important that we, he came to the United States. And so in 1987, we started in Indianapolis, Indiana of all places. And mm -hmm and slowly organically grew into the, the footprint you see today of, uh, you know, we're proud to be around a $50 million company with over 1500 employees in the US. And uh, we're growing customer by customer and trying to replicate, uh, you know, what Mr. Nawazie started in France, uh, you know, 64 years ago um, today to be successful. And, uh, you know, I think we're starting to get it right. Wow, that's a, why Indianapolis? Do you know, is there, is there a- Yeah, I, I've never figured that one out. I've never yeah. had a I had the opportunity. I don't know why that, that was an acquisition that was made. That was oh, one of the okay. acquisitions he made. Uh, we, we, we partnered with a company that uh, was the dominant player in Indianapolis. So if you go downtown Indianapolis, half of the buildings in the city are cleaned by us. Oh, and, okay. you know, we, you know, we expanded out from there, but uh, the company hasn't made an acquisition of another company in a very long time now. Mm -hmm. and, and given, given the fact that this is, I mean, it's kind of an interesting time to be a global country, a global company or are, are have some of your um, some of your priorities been different depending on where depending on on where your teams are located over the past year? And I understand that you're just you're you're in the U.S., so you might not know what your counterparts are doing in the rest of the world. But but yeah. as far as you can tell, well, you know, we communicate obviously with our you know, our teams yeah. in France, and uh, you know, a little bit with our team in Canada, and uh, we're all going through the same thing. Is it's just kind of on a different time uh, time frame. It's you yeah. know, it seems like Europe was ahead of us in terms of when when COVID really hit, and and some of the things that they would have to adjust to. Um, you know, and I, I think it was it's more so on the segment of business. Um, you know, and the response more than it is the country. Um, you know, obviously a lot in the airport space and airplanes, that business shut down and we we're using the resource of our teams there and, and funneling them into where our essential customers were, right? You know, schools, you know, continue to, you know, operate and stay open manufacturing. So, you know, while we lost a lot of, um, you know, uh, employees in some of our office environments, we were using those employees to help supplement what we're doing in the other places with our business were, that remained essential. They were ramping up cleaning. So, you know, I think we all experience the same thing, um, you know, in all the different countries we're in. Okay. Yeah. Right. The timing sure makes a difference. Um, Denise, I don't know if you wanted to add anything, but if you do, um, feel free to, to, to jump in also. Um, we'd be happy to have, have both of your perspectives on here. And if there are any, and to anybody who's, who's, um, who's in the audience, please still feel free to, to ask any questions in the, in the Q and A or in the chat. Um, I don't know if this is this is this is interesting. So I don't want to I don't want to be asking all the questions. I just want to make sure that everybody has a chance to to jump in. But Denise, also, if you have anything that you wanted to wanted to add about about uh, about GSF, oh, I think um, I think Kurt pretty much covered everything. I actually had asked a question: um, what distinguishes us from our competitors? And I'd love it if you could talk through that, Kurt. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's our, it's our people, it's our leaders. Um, you, you know, anybody can get the chemical, anybody can develop by, by the same equipment we're buying. 
Um, you know, anybody can develop a very simplistic process we have. Uh, it's not about a checklist. It's about the, you know, the team and the culture of, of, of clean, of what you're creating and uh, re really creating a culture that motivates people to do the work, right? It's, yeah. it's valuing the folks uh, that are doing the work every day. That, that is and will always be the, the biggest differentiator for us and, and the only way it works. Right. I would I would 100% agree with that. And I think um, in addition to our ability to invest in the technology that Kurt mentioned, as well as our people, um, I think is what sets us apart from the rest. So that's right. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that there's a you have a, a training program, right? How does how does that work? And is that is that a fairly unique, um, unique aspect to 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 this type of business? Yeah, I'd say it's very unique. Um, actually got the idea uh, from traveling back and forth to France, uh, you know, a couple times because I would, uh, before this hit, I would go twice a year for, for meetings, which is obviously a very neat experience. Uh, but but I got to learn what, what we do in France and we have GSF University in France. And as mm -hmm. I started to understand a little bit more about what that was, you know, we, we brought that idea over here. And in, in France, they take people through very specific processes, both from a frontline service operator to a manager, uh, through obviously the basic training stuff, but they even go as far as language training for folks over in France to, to help them be able to communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, um, the amount of, uh, you know, different races and backgrounds of folks that, are, that, that, that complete our team over in France, it's, it's a very diverse you know, group. Mm -hmm. uh, so two years ago, we started what we called GSF University here, and it, and it first started with, uh, you know, kind of just getting together, huddling and sharing experiences to where today we're taking people that are in uh, supervisor and other leadership positions. And we've even partnered with a, uh, a local community college, Harper, and we're going through uh, college classes with our team. Oh, wow. Um, That's great. You, you know, and, uh, you know, about what leadership means and what we're asking them. You know, mm -hmm. our, our ultimate key success as we continue to grow at a pretty rapid pace is be able to grow and develop people. And uh, the best way to do that is uh, from the people that we already have and uh, opening a door and providing opportunities for, you know, for them to grow as we all have at, you know, at one point in our careers is where we have been, uh, where, where it looks dramatically different for us than anybody else. You know, I, I think everybody will tell you that's, you know, in this business that they train, uh, but, but they really don't, you know, I've seen it, um, you know, as I've walked buildings and I've seen equipment and chemicals, you know, they'll put a, a proposal together for you that talks about how well they do a training, but, um, they're not really investing in it because it's a lot of work. Uh, it's a lot of time, effort, and energy. But again, you know, that's what differentiates, um, you know, I would say us from the rest is the core focus on people. It, 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 we really care. And do you find that that's, that that's helped with employee retention in a way that might not be uh, as common in your field? Yeah, retention and uh, recruitment. Um, yeah. You know, I, we don't even put ads out for uh, jobs anymore. Uh, we're at the point of that because, uh, you know, people that are in the cleaning industry realize that coming here, you're treated differently. And it's not about wage rate difference. I could pay them the same amount of money as they were working for a current other company, but the way that they're treated, treated with dignity and respect is, is, is a big deal. Um, you know, simply somebody, somebody saying hi to them and giving them a merit increase every year and mm -hmm. thanking them for what we do. I mean, it's the, it's the simplistic stuff of, you know, running a business where I feel, you know, coming into this industry that everybody else has completely forgotten about. Um, you know, and I, and I think that's what, I know that's what makes us different. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, we have a, another participant question. What is the cleaning protocol um, after there's been a, a positive COVID case in the, in the facility? It, it, I think it's changed 15 times, uh, you know, in the last year. But, uh, you know, what, what we do a lot is we'll recommend a, a process to our customers uh, as, as to what should be done. But a lot of times they have a, a very high opinion of what needs to be done as well. And, uh, you know, in the school environment, it's unique, uh, depending if a school's in, in uh, you know, back in full or if they're in a hybrid mentality. You know, they, they would clear the classroom for 24 hours and we would go full and disinfect with our with our chemicals and our electrostatic spraying. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of that would go on. But I would say it's it's different given the environment of our, is the business in full operation, is the business, uh, you know, partial operation and how many people are in the building. 
Um, you know, uh, typically in a in a uh, in a normal school environment today, if there's a uh, COVID infection, they go through the tracing process on their end. We're going through. We're fully cleaning and disinfecting it. We're opening the windows. Um, you know, our folks are going in with the you know the PPE and the masks at the time and. Uh, you know, then again, they'll leave it open for 24 hours. We'll go back in and again and disinfect it, and then they'll open that classroom back up. Yeah. Some schools and businesses don't have the luxury of doing that. Uh, you know, they need the space quicker than that, and you know, and they can't afford uh, to lose that square footage of, of learning environment for their students. Um, you know, they'll obviously be communicating with all of the parents and teachers of you know that there was a you know COVID. COVID outbreak or somebody had it and go through a tracing thing, but, you know, sometimes we're asked to clean those classrooms quicker and, um, and, and we do that. Um, you know, we're very confident with our approach to the electrostatic spraying with our chemicals, mm -hmm. or even in two of the school districts where we're going through with the UVC lights and um, we're confident that's cleaning and disinfecting the entire environment. Interesting. Um, another question, have you, have schools been able to leverage your, your unique approach to cleaning um, and, and the, your, your products in order to open sooner in some, in some cases? And that's, that's not, I know it's not totally dependent on you and their district questions, but have you seen that at all? Uh, I'm proud to say we've had, uh, you know, a few districts that have never closed. Um, you know, some districts, uh, depending on where they're located, uh, closing for them uh, from a, um, you know, it's very difficult because the students need somewhere to go, um, you know, both for a, from a food perspective and from, uh, you know, their, their parents are working. Um, so we've had several districts that have never closed. I, I'd love to tell you that we're a huge part of them being able to stay open. And uh, but I can't tell you where the sole reason they're able to stay open. But, you know, we work with them extensively. Every district that uh, has either stayed open or worked through a process to open. Um, you know, we've talked about our processes. We've shot videos. Uh, we put marketing materials together. We've done case studies to allow the district to help communicate to the parents, most importantly, and the teachers of what's being done to help support their districts to open. Mm -hmm. So I think we've been a big part of it. Do you think, just a, sort of a follow-up question to that, do you think that it's probably too soon now, but eventually there'll be some, some, some data um, available and some sort of evaluation of, of the best protocols to be able to... Um, to maintain, uh, you know, facilities opening, um, if you if you follow if you follow certain cleaning protocols, some sort of certain minimum cleaning protocols. Yeah, I, I think there will be some generic things that you know they're going to recommend. Um, you know, everybody's wearing masks. There's going to be continued distance. Yeah. And, uh, frequency of disinfecting. Mm -hmm. I think I think those three things are going to be the the drivers of it. Um, you know, and then I think it's going to be about uh, air quality as well. You know, how much air circulation and quality is going through, you know, your building. Um, mm -hmm. I think those are the four drivers that I that, that I see. Uh, but I think increased disinfecting of your frequent touch point areas is critical. Mm -hmm. Where your bathroom was, you know, bathroom in, a, in an office space was cleaned uh, once a day during the day and maybe once at night, <laughs> right? Yeah. Maybe refreshed twice a day. Now it's refreshed six times a day and mm -hmm. it's not just... Mm -hmm. It's just not the materials in the bathroom. It's somebody's going going in and disinfecting it with a UVC or a you know electrostatic spraying device to ensure it's cleaner. Mm -hmm. Especially in areas where, like you know, like a bathroom where where people converge, yeah. you, you see a lot more more cleaning being done. You're going to have to. That makes sense. Does anybody have any any last questions? Um, and if not, Chris, Kurt and Denise, do you have any anything that you'd like to add? Anything that we didn't um, that we didn't address that that you'd like to to tell us about? No, I think this is uh, been a great opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about us, what we're doing. Uh, we're passionate about what we do. Um, you know, we're, uh, we we think our approach to cleaning is the right one. Uh, we're always open to to helping people uh, work through the process, no matter if. Um, you know, they're working with us or not, we'll, we'll be open and honest and tell them what we think should be done, um, almost like a consultant. And, um, you know, while we're a French company and we've been part of the organization for, for a little while, I'm, we're excited this year that we're kind of going all in into being a, a true partner of this organization uh, from here on out. So we're excited. That's great. Thank you both so much. Thank you for, for telling us your, your story. And, um, you know, it's been a, a busy year for you. So it's, um, uh, it, but it, it's been it's great to to hear um, to hear how how everything is going and to hear how you're how you're addressing a global pandemic. Um, so and thank you both very much again for your time. 
we will follow up with everybody uh, who registered for this for this panel uh, with an email with more information. Um, and I will make sure that they also have your contact information so that there can be, if there are any follow-up questions, they can, they can reach out to you. Thank you again to everybody for being here this morning and have a good rest of the day and a good weekend. Talk to you soon. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye.